Nashville was started, the recording studios and everything, by musicians. Owen Bradley, Chet Atkins, Steve Scholes. They ran those businesses. It was a healthy competition. Nobody ever wanted to copy each other. Uh, I, I, Harold Bradley was kind enough to speak to me one day and uh, talk to me, and, and he was going on about how we would have never dreamed of copying Chet or he, I, we were too proud to do that. Mm -hmm. We wanted a bigger hit, but we wanted something completely different. Right. Now that's changed. They want, if, if there's something selling a gazillion records, these companies aren't ran. There's no Ahmed Aragon here anymore. There's not a Sam Phillips. There's not an innovator. There's They're going to their departments and going, we want something just like this so we can get us a gazillion dollars. Exactly. And I never wanted to be a part of that. Nobody has years ago. Right. Um, I thought you worked hard enough on road trips. On what? Well, probably not. I mean, I just... I, I think I just assume that it's so stupid that I can't imagine anyone. That, that I, I mean, it's like... But there's your mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That's we have to go over, overestimating. Uh, bro country is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you know, uh, talk about socially confused. You know, uh, emulate, you know, you're supposed to emulate things that means something to you. Uh, and, and this just shows you what a phony bunch of crap that is. Because there is no way that white farm boys, other than the swagger, want to emulate the life of an urban black young man. There's no way. Well, we've talked before many times, you and I, away from music about the increasing stupidization of America. The dumbing down. I see Nashville as a prime example oh. because it's going to the lowest common denominator. Sure. It's discouraging growth. It's discouraging intellect. Uh, talking Nashville. Exactly. Uh, the last time I was in the BMI office, to Pick or up something. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Actually, I'm, I'm a big BMI guy, so I can't, you know. Uh, they may be the Guido brothers sometimes, but they're my Guido brothers. <laughs> <you know? laughs> they do collect the money. Uh, John McCune was sitting there waiting for <laughs> <I'm> 36 cents. <laughs> <sorry, six. laughs> yeah. And uh, I went over and was talked to him, and I told him, you know, what a big influence the Dirt Band oh. had been on me. And, it, and, and because people forget that was the country band that broke into rock long before anybody else did before you know 20 years before in alabama you know mr bojangles and stuff that man that was early 70s you know uh jackson brown used to be in that band uh but uh you know i was telling you how much the first circle being broken in record was. Mm -hmm. and then we started talking about the changing atmosphere and attitudes of record companies he goes okay he said, let's take that album as an example. He says, imagine you're a kind of folk, kind of country, kind of rock, kind of bluegrass band. That, Collection of hippies. That, yeah, that has had one minor hit the entire time they've been signed to your label. And they walk in your office and go, we want to do a three album set with a bunch of old timers that nobody cares about because we think it's important. And the record company going, okay, <laughs> sounds good to us. Yeah. Because it'll never happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, you allude to that in your in your song. I mean, when you, when you talk about all the people who couldn't get deals now. Right. And, well, it's true. If you look at all the... You left out with Pierce. Yeah, I did. You talk about somebody who really couldn't get a deal now. Yeah, but Webb made so much money, wouldn't need one. That's true. Uh, <laughs> People forget that only Hank Williams sold Webb Pierce in the 50s. Well, you don't have to preach the gospel. You're right. <laughs> uh, you know, what's wrong with the world when a Marty Stewart and a Ricky Skaggs and a Lucinda Williams do an Emmy Lou Harris, for God's sake, uh, and Steve Earle and Rodney Crowell. Rodney Crowell are on minor labels. They're probably much happier now. But you know what? Really? 
Like they're not good enough to be on your, on your major label, but mm -hmm. Taylor Swift is really. Well, we have to look at where the major label goes to sell its product. True. And where the radio. Goes. But you know it what? Is, what I always say is that you know what they didn't do that in the fifties and sixties, and they and still everybody made money. It's just the same thing going on with America with politics or however you want. You know, I always say, how much goddamn money do you need? Yeah. 